Okay, so I'd like to welcome you all to the first edition of Quantum Computation and Isolation. This is the first of a weekly seminar series that's going to take place normally at 2 p.m. Eastern Time um, every Tuesday. Um, so if you want to get regular emails and you haven't already, you can join the Google group, which is now in the chat. And you can see future talks on the QCI website, which is also now in the chat. So today for the inaugural lecture, we have Dr. Thaya Ha Cha from uh, University of Toronto. Uh, he got his bachelor's degree in physics from National University of Singapore from 20, in 2012. And then he got his master's degree in physics from National University of Singapore in 2015 and his PhD also from the National University of Singapore in 2018. From 2019 to present, he's been a postdoc in a group of Alain Asperger Brzeek at the University of Toronto. He's the recipient of numerous awards and um, recognitions, including being elected a member of the Institute of Physics in Singapore 2012 to present. He was elected a member of the American Physical Society from 2015 to present. And today he'll be talking about designing quantum hardware with quantum computers. So please help me in welcoming either virtually um, or by unmuting yourselves and clapping, Professor Thai Ha Chua. Thank you, Joshua, for inviting me to give, a, to give a talk and to get started with this uh, initiative. So um, without further ado, let me share my screen and uh, give you some, okay. So can you all see my screen, right? Uh, yes, it looks good. Right, okay. And, um, okay, so um, so during the, during the entire presentation, so, so feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions or anything like that, okay? Uh, I mean, verifications or comments, whatever it is, feel free to interrupt. Uh, it's, gonna, it's supposed to be an informal um, talk. So uh, today, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, this uh, recent, uh, a few papers that we wrote uh, uh, together with my uh, collaborators. Uh, uh, it is about uh, designing quantum hardware with a quantum computer. So uh, in particular, it's, uh, it's in collaboration with Tim Hanat, who are based in Harvard and MIT. And, uh, and then we have uh, uh, Nichols and Johns, uh, uh, who are, who used to be our, our former group members, and now they are uh, based in Intel Quantums in California. And, uh, and uh, we, where Oliver is, uh, is, uh, is a PhD advisor of team. And okay. so as I, as I mentioned uh, previously, uh, I am from uh, Myanmar originally. And so as you know, um, um, uh, the, a lot of the many sad things happening right now. And so if you want to check it out, uh, this is the, uh, the hashtag that you can search in uh, Twitter. Anyway, so um, in this entire talk, what we uh, put forward in this uh, uh, kind of uh, areas of a new uh, uh, frontiers in this uh, kind of a big umbrella of quantum simulations, uh, whether it be it's, uh, it's a digital analog or digital analog quantum simulations, right? So I'm probably, if you are familiar with, right, some of those, some of the physical systems that uh, physicists are trying to simulate using quantum computers are, uh, it can be a quantum field theories, or it can be uh, some inner mechanisms of uh, black holes, or, or it can even be a, a non-physical systems, right? So you guys see my uh, pointers here, right? So uh, such as that, you know, uh, dynamical Casimir effect. Uh, uh, so this can all be simulated in uh, in uh, in, a, in a quantum computing uh, systems. And uh, and what we put forward uh, recently last year, uh, I mean near the end of last year, was to simulate uh, uh, a, a quantum processor or quantum processing unit uh, uh, using a. Uh, um, uh, 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 say general purpose uh, quantum computer. So uh, let me let me uh, uh, try to uh, elaborate further more about that uh, in a, in a few se a few seconds. Okay. So the idea and uh, the main motivation behind this uh, idea is is as follows, right? So as you are probably uh, uh, following this uh, latest uh, news in the in the general public, right? So uh, Chinese uh, uh, quantum uh, Gaussian Gaussian sampling devices. Uh, declared to be uh, so much, much, uh, million times uh, better than uh, Google Sycamore chips, right? And also, you know, uh, back in 2019, uh, Google uh, claimed to have these quantum uh, advantage experiments, right, done in, with with their uh, native 53 qubits 
on the computer. Right? So I don't have to elaborate all those experiments now. So this is, these are all very, uh, very popular uh, these days. And so as you know that uh, all these um, experiments have shown us, right, is that, you know, uh, we have already in this uh, experimental capability where uh, current classical computers are now uh, not going to be able to uh, simulate and calculate their, their inner mechanisms of those uh, high performance quantum uh, devices, right? So, so we are already in this, in the verge of, verge of you know, already exist, exceeding, exceeding this uh, capability of this best uh, and fastest supercomputers that we have right now, right? So let me give you, give you a brief ideas of the, the past um, history of the uh, say now uh, let's focus in this uh, transmon uh, uh, quantum hardware devices, which is the which is the uh, typical say superconducting circuit device that uh, 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 widely used by Google's and IBM machines, right? Uh, it started off with you know, like uh, uh, in the, in the first experiments done in Yale, right back in back in close to two thousand eight or so, and uh, and all the way up to the uh, Google uh, Google experiments uh, done in two thousand nineteen, right? So these are and then uh, this is a lot a lot plot, right? It's a number of transforms versus the the years uh, uh, along the way, right? And, and uh, you can see roughly that, of course, I mean, uh, we are not predicting this. Okay, this uh, this is going to be following this trend, right? But but roughly, you can see that the that development is is kind of like exponential in a way, right? And of course, if you uh, naively uh, put uh, the the capability of the uh, uh, classical mem uh, classical supercomputer memory that can simulate those uh, quantum devices, right? If you put those uh, in, 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 in perspective, right? Then you see that this is uh, kind of like uh, uh, following in this trajectory here, right? So again, as you see, um, uh, the, uh, the latest experiments by Google is already, uh, already uh, uh, on the, at, the, at the corners of this, uh, uh, um, the age of beyond what uh, current uh, classical supercomputers can uh, manage to do in terms of uh, 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 naively mapping the uh, memory capabilities, right? Of course, uh, if you try to uh, uh, cap use some sort of a structural memories and, uh, and uh, I say the clever way to allocate the memories and stuff like that, but still you can, you can, you can still simulate that uh, machines uh, and, and of course, I mean, I don't want to go into those details here, but of course, what we put forward in this uh, new ideas of simulating a, a quantum processor with another quantum processor is, is the following, right? So because, uh, um, and you will see also in the, in the, in the later slides as well, is that uh, this is the, uh, the red color uh, 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 the uh, diamonds and I mean triangles referring to some of the um, uh, uh, the memory associated with the uh, uh, iron trap uh, quantum computers and also also tra transmon quantum processors, right? So if the idea is that, right, if we map the those uh, 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 quantum supremacy experiments by Google's into uh, already existing, say, um, reliable uh, high thread devices or, or some other devices that you like to uh, uh, operate on, right? Then it, you can you can simply map those uh, problems into those uh, devices as well, right? Because then uh, then you will not have the problems of this exponential blowing up in the memory uh, uh, issues, right? Because uh, now simply is that uh, you are just simply mapping a quantum device to a, a different quantum devices, right? So, so then the, the numbers, uh, the, the memories requires will be steady uh, polynomially uh, growing with the number of qubits uh, uh, that you are trying to uh, simulate, right? So in that sense, right, in the in the example of a transmon uh, quantum processor, right? Uh, uh, what we try to do was uh, we require we we estimate that uh, uh, for in order to simulate a, a physical transmon device, which is uh, which is a multi-level uh, 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 quantum system, right, and, and uh, we will require uh, four uh, data qubits. 
So basically, you can simply map the, so, so then every number of the transform that you have, you simply divide by four and you, you will get this uh, red solid line here, okay? And let me, let me try to go into details what I meant by this uh, four data qubits, okay? So, uh, so the idea is that, okay, um, if, if those uh, devices, right, which are already way well beyond the capability of uh, uh, supercomputers, then one should use uh, a quantum uh, device to simulate uh, another quantum uh, device. Okay, that's the main message here. Okay, so let me give you a brief idea of what is the typical life cycle of uh, designing a superconducting circuit experiment, right? For instance, like, uh, uh, as you know, uh, in this kind of uh, experiments, we would like to design a, a quantum, quantum processing unit, right? We're composed of a, a fundamental building block, which is a, a qubit, right? So it's, which is a two-level system, right? And then in this, uh, in the language of superconducting circuit experiments, right? Uh, so what we see here on the on the figure right hand side, right? You have this uh, typical uh, tunable uh, transform chips, uh, and then and then uh, for the for the sake of a simplicity, right? Let's assume that they uh, it is arranged in a, in a linear manner, right? And in a one dimensional change, it can be a it can be in a complicated two dimensional or three dimensional structures, right? It doesn't matter, right? And, and of course, uh, we don't know what are the uh, parameters of those uh, uh, capacitors or inductors, right? Because this is the, like uh, I'm giving you uh, ideas of uh, designing a, a, a transform uh, circuits, right? So when we have that, right, then we 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 ask experimentalists to design and go and fabricate in the clean room, right? And, uh, and that's what you got uh, in this. Uh, uh, John Martini's uh, 2015 experiment, right? This is uh, uh, the beginning of this uh, Google experiment. This is called Ismond's qubits. And, uh, and then you have, you have this individual Ismond's uh, as we draw in this, uh, in this uh, circuit diagram here, right? And then afterwards, right? After the fabrications, you got to uh, go in, inside a lab and, uh, and uh, put it into a vacuum chambers and then you got to uh, uh, shine a, a microwave and then you measure the output of those individual qubits and uh, you, you try to see what are the, what are the, uh, what are the outputs and make a measurements, right? And then eventually after making measurements and if you don't, uh, and if you realize that, okay, those measurements are not what, uh, Intended to be in the beginnings, right? Then you gotta you gotta go back to your growing, growing board and uh, and then uh, uh, try to figure out you know, what are the parameters that you have to change and uh, and uh, in order to uh, achieve what you wanted to achieve in the experiments, right? So so this kind of a cycle of uh, um, uh, manufacturing and the designing is is, is is taking a lot of times, right? And so what we uh, uh, are looking forward is to uh, remove this, uh, the, the bottom layers, right? And says, okay, why don't we use uh, uh, existing, pre-existing reliable uh, quantum computer, right? And whatever design that uh, uh, we try to uh, uh, put forward, right? We just have to uh, uh, code it inside uh, uh, some reliable uh, quantum computers that we have, right? And then, and then, you know, try to see uh, uh, what will be the uh, outcomes of those, right? So, of course, uh, there is also a very interesting and a very nice uh, articles that uh, are written by my colleagues' uh, team. So, if you are also interested, you can also have a look at it. So, uh, this paper uh, concerned with uh, uh, some sort of uh, using classical optimization techniques to uh, to figure out what are the uh, individual uh, circuit components that require us to achieve uh, a particular uh, outcomes that uh, we would like to have, right? But but it's purely a classical optimization or uh, techniques, right? So, but again, uh, this techniques is going to be also, um, um, uh, uh, say, um, uh, out of the verif verifications, right? Because if you have more and more physical qubits in your system that you're trying to simulate, then uh, you still need to rely on this uh, proposal that we uh, I'm trying to present here, right? So basically, you also have to rely on the using 
uh, quantum device to simulate uh, uh, another quantum uh, device, right? So let me give you brief your ideas. I mean, I'm not sure like uh, uh, what is the background of the audience, right? So uh, in this respect, uh, let me give you a brief ideas of what is happening uh, and what is the, uh, what is a what is a transmon in the first place, right? Because uh, uh, that that is a, that is a good uh, start, and um, I believe that uh, you are familiar with, uh, uh, say, quantum harmonic oscillator, uh, which is nothing but uh, uh, capacitors and inductors, right? Uh, couple in this uh, way, and then. And then if you and then you can you can quantize this uh, electrical circuit and uh, and if you plot energy spectrums then uh, uh, from the from the from the uh, energy rate uh, decibel we know that uh, the energy spectrums of this uh, uh, quantum harmonic oscillator is equal level space right that is why you have the zero one two and so on and so forth right and uh, uh, of course that uh, if you know uh, this is not a very good system for uh, for a, a getting a, a two level systems for quantum computational uh, purpose right because we would like to have uh, a two level systems uh, uh, that can be controllable and uh, in here uh, uh, since energy levels are equal in space, right? Uh, if you excite uh, zero to one, uh, there's also a tendency that this uh, one is going to be excited to two, three, and so on and so forth, right? So this is not a very good for a quantum control experiment. So what we need is going to be a, a nonlinear circuit elements, which is typically we call this uh, uh, chosen junctions. And uh, you, if you insert this uh, chosen junction in the place of uh, inductors, then what you get in the energy spectrum is that you will eventually suppress the level separations and uh, and then and then and then as you can see here in these figures right um the uh, the uh, you will get uh, so the energy levels are now not equal level space anymore right and uh, uh, some of those will be uh, stay right we still need to consider uh, 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 say up to level two right uh, so typically in the in the literatures transmons are like a uh, um, three level system kind of things and uh, but still because of this uh, non uh, linear uh, say non and harmonicity present in the state one and two we still can use this zero and one as to be a, a logical state of uh, for quantum computation purpose right and and of course uh this zone junction is nothing but a uh you have a um, uh, super, you, you just uh, take uh, uh, two superconducting islands and a sandwich in between uh, tiny layers of uh, insulated layers. Uh, and uh, and uh, this is on the right hand side, this is the FEM image of a typical uh, chosen junctions that you we use in the, in the experiments. Okay. And uh, because of the, um, uh, and, and uh, the 16 levels that I mentioned previously is come from the uh, taking into consider the uh, proper energy level truncations of uh, uh, this uh, this uh, say so-called non anharmonic uh, uh, harmonic oscillators quantum systems and, and that is where the system is coming in right so so in order to capture because this is there as there are many level systems right in order to capture the uh, um, uh, uh, because uh, as you know, right, uh, harmonic oscillators is, uh, is like a, uh, there is no bounded in the energy spectrums, right? So in principle, one has to take into consider all the infinite energy levels, right? But then, you know, uh, um, uh, for a simulation purpose, right, we are typically uh, interested in some of the low line excited, uh, low line uh, excitation modes of the quantum system. And so, so we found that uh, uh, if we make a cut this energy level, right? Uh, level 16 it seems to be a, a good number, uh, and uh, we should be able to uh, capture some of uh, some of the uh, basic uh, physics that we are interested in the in this uh, uh, quantum simulations uh, experiments. Okay, well that is that is the, that is this uh, uh, number 16. Uh, that is how this number 16 come into place. Okay. So um, okay. Let me stop by asking, do you guys have any questions? I mean, if you have any questions, so feel free to raise the questions. I mean, uh, otherwise, then I will continue. Okay. All right. Um, so, um, 
as you already see, right? I mean, in the beginnings, uh, this is uh, 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 a single transmon electrical circuit, uh, and, uh, and uh, it's a it's a tunable one because uh, we have this uh, uh, two Joseon junctions, and uh, there's a there's a loop present here, and uh, by by uh, creating an external magnetic field, uh, you know, through this loop, you can you can tune the energy level of this uh, uh, the the energy gap of this uh, system here. So let me let me go back a little bit. One slide here. So so what I meant by this is right. Initially, we have this electrical circuit, right? By putting additional uh, just junctions uh, as a, as a form of a loop and uh, threading uh, uh, external magnetic field, one can in principle tune this uh, artificial uh, uh, two-level systems, right? This energy level, H bar omega zero one energy gap uh, is, a, is, a, is a form of a tunable tunable energy. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a very interesting thing about this artificial atoms uh, uh, or two-level system here, right? So uh, basically in a, in, a, in a natural system, right? Like like rubidium, sodium atoms like in, in a co atom experiment, uh, you won't be able to uh, do this kind of a tunable uh, uh, um, energy level, uh, energy level, uh, 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 say, uh, uh, kind of a properties, right? But in this uh, artificial uh, uh, atoms uh, uh, systems, uh, you can have this kind of a tunable uh, energy levels, and this is kind of neat as well. So you will see uh, later on uh, uh, what I meant by uh, tunability, okay? So if you trust me, right, uh, if you quantize this electrical circuits uh, and uh, and write in terms of uh, number of um, uh, couple pairs uh, 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 crossing this uh, superconducting islands, right? And you can you can recast all this entire electrical circuits in terms of uh, uh, this uh, simple uh, 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 quantum harmonic uh, quantum uh, nonlinear harmonic oscillators, kind of uh, Hamiltonian, right? And uh, uh, here and uh, and referring to this. Uh, the uh, Cooper pairs, uh, number of Cooper pairs, and uh, this phi here is the uh, superconducting phase uh, operators, okay, uh, passing through these uh, uh, junctions here, okay, these uh, island junctions across across these island junctions. And so, and if naively uh, speaking, right, if you try to write these operators, right, because if you want to do, if you want to simulate this uh, uh, Hamiltonian in a, in a, in a, say, in a, in a classical computer, right, so one has to uh, uh, write down as a, as a form of a, a matrix, and, and uh, basically that is what I wrote down here as well, right. And this n operator is nothing but a, is a diagonal diagonal uh, matrix, right? And then the rest will be all zero. And uh, the here cosine operator is nothing but some sort of like a um, uh, some sort of like a, a uh, you know like a displacement kind of a displace similar to like a displacement operators kind of things, right? And the rest will be all zero components, right? And, uh, and this is eventually what it looked like, right? A system by 16 matrix, right? Because as I mentioned earlier on, uh, uh, we only limit ourselves into uh, a truncation of a 16 energy level, right? So that's, that's, that's the reason why we have a 16 by 16 matrix, okay? And uh, so, um, uh, so let me, give, so, so then, you know, typically uh, we will have uh, like, you know, a bunch of uh, uh, collection of these uh, transmons in this uh, uh, processing unit that we are, we are interested to simulate, right? And then, and then we would like to see what is the energy spectrum of this uh, device, and, uh, and then and then how how do we how do we uh, investigate investigate like what are the unwanted uh, uh, noises or, or some of the 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 cross dot uh, between uh, like individual transmon qubits, right? What what are the what are those what are those uh, um, unwanted uh, and all the stuff, right? So, so that's what we wanted to find out in the in the uh, in the in the quantum simulations uh, experiments, right? So, so, so then uh, let me give you an idea of how we uh, simulate those uh, in the in the digital uh, quantum computer, right? Uh, firstly, I have to tell you like uh, what is the translations of the uh, Hamiltonian that I showed you earlier on in terms of uh, uh, Pauli strings because this is a uh, this is a language of uh, uh, digital quantum computers that uh, uh, 
are typically uh, used by IBM or Google or whatever uh, any quantum computers that uh, uh, you you like to I mean you you are familiar with right so uh, they they are typically talking about um, uh, power screen so so it's important that uh, this uh, trans Mohammedanian has to be translate translated into the language of those uh, digital quantum computer right and then and then the next step is that after the after the mapping right and uh, uh, we wanted to find out the energy spectrums of that uh, systems and we're going to use uh, variational uh, 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 quantum algorithms to 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 get those energy spectrums. And then, and then, uh, and then afterwards, we are going to use the Suzuki trawler expansions to to get uh, uh, unitary uh, dynamic and, uh, and then see how the how the uh, how the uh, how the uh, dynamic simulations look like. And uh, and then again, uh, we also lastly we try to simulate what are the what are the uh, calls, uh, say what are the uh, quantum resource required for uh, simulating like n number of transmons in the in the in the, in the future, uh, say quantum simulation purpose, right? And so okay, firstly, as I, as I show you before, right? Uh, we have this uh, n operators and uh, and the phase operators, right? And, and so uh, and uh, this this matrix is corresponding to this n operators, and uh, this is like kind of like a uh, kind of phase operators kind of things, right? So what we have to do is that uh, we take this uh, matrix and uh, we map it into the Pauli matrices, right? That is what we have to do. Uh, and uh, let me give you a brief idea, right? So what I mean by this, right? So uh, is that this this matrix is a very general, okay? So so if you are interested, also uh, this is the uh, uh, recent paper that we published in the MBJ quantum information, right? Where we analyze uh, many different forms of this uh, D-level types of uh, Hamiltonians, right? Because typically in the communities. Um, uh, most of the uh, researchers are only dealing with uh, simulating, the, say, fermionics or assistance, right? So, so in that, uh, in this, in those simulations, there are already uh, existing uh, um, uh, transformations such as uh, Bravikita transformations or John Wooden transformations. Uh, those are those are like a very uh, standard techniques, right? But for the uh, bodo systems and uh, D-level uh, spin Hamiltonians, um, there are no more way to uh, uh, to go about. And uh, so, in this uh, recent paper, uh, we try to uh, go in deeper into like a uh, uh, say. Uh, uh, calculating like uh, what are the uh, what are the uh, resource required for different types of mappings and uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, for some uh, we found some of the some of the mappings they have uh, some sort of uh, efficiency uh, uh, in in terms of a uh, number of uh, uh, qubit requires and also the number of the two qubits gate requires so 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 I mean if you use a, a particular gate uh, mapping you can suppress some of those uh, number so because this is important right because we we don't really have uh, uh, a lot of uh, qubits and a lot of uh, gate operations that we can perform in the in the current um, uh, hardware so it is important to uh, leverage those uh, different types of mapping to to get some sort of efficient uh, encoding schemes okay so. Uh, as an example, right? Uh, if you take this uh, three four plus four three kind of a uh, uh, matrix, right? And then what you can do is that you can write down this uh, in this uh, typically uh, what we call this is a standard binary mapping, right? What you can do is that you can write down three and four as a as a binary number, and then and then, and then uh, in this in this uh, in this uh, cat and bra. Right notations, and afterwards, what you do is that you just uh, involve this uh, uh, projectors, right? Because those projectors are uh, referring to zero one, where we refer to sigma minus, and the one zero will be sigma plus, and so on and so forth, right? So, uh, if you write down this in this way, and then using this conversion rule, you can easily get this uh, Pauli strings. Okay, uh, I mean, and then, so you can simply write down a, a very simple. Uh, Code to to uh, to to do this kind of transformations and also uh, there's also a different types of encoding called gray encodings and uh, and then uh, uh, I mean uh, everything is discussed in this uh, paper if you're interested you can have a look at it 
Uh, so with our father, there's any uh, cosine operators that uh, we see earlier on, right? We can also uh, map these uh, operators into this, uh, that uh, using these techniques that we uh, is, uh, explained earlier on, right? And then you can you can map it into uh, into this uh, uh, Pauli's uh, strings, right? And then that, 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 that's all right. That's all you have. You need and uh, and then once the mapping is done, then you can start to do uh, uh, numerical experiments or maybe if you have a IBM uh, uh, device uh, access, right? Then you can also run it on IBM quantum computers as well, right? So in this uh, 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 slides, what I want to talk about is like, uh, uh, what is the variation algorithms that we use uh, to get the energy spectrums of this uh, transmon uh, uh, device, right? And typically, if you are not so familiar, uh, variational quantum algorithms are nothing but uh, if you, you have a, a quantum circuit and, uh, and uh, this quantum circuit is uh, initially you, you prepare with like zero, all, all state in zero state and then, and then, and then uh, you go through some uh, uh, quantum circuit which are uh, uh, parameterized, uh, uh, parameterized quantum circuit, right? And then uh, you make a measure projection measurements uh, and you try to find the expectation values of this uh, loss functions uh, or, or minimum of this uh, uh, loss uh, functions, right? Or like uh, some parameter functions that you are interested, right? Here is uh, energy, right? It doesn't necessarily that it has to be an energy. It can be others, other functions as well, right? Then what you do is that uh, you insert this energy uh, evaluations and uh, give it to a classical computers and, uh, and this classical computers where they now uh, feedback to the quantum circuit, uh, changing these uh, parameters in the quantum circuit. And, uh, and then you just keep looping this uh, uh, feedback loop, right? Again, 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 hoping that eventually uh, we will arrive to this uh, uh, minimum of the uh, uh, ground state energy of the transmog hamiltonians and thereby finding the uh, uh, energies energy of that right so so here is the uh, the, the the circuit diagrams that I showed earlier on right and as I already mentioned right uh, we truncate the transmog into a 16 energy level so uh, since 16 energy level so we require four uh, data qubits, right? So that's what we have here, uh, four qubits uh, systems. And, and then we have uh, enzyme uh, circuit here, right? So basically what I meant by this uh, plus parameters that you, you see here is the is is the uh, a theta z theta all these are the classical parameters right the theta are the classical parameters and uh, you can you can change your theta uh, yeah, um, um, with the help of a classical computer right and then eventually uh, and then we try to get the energy spectrums and uh, this is the um, uh, results of this uh, uh, transmond uh, single single transmond systems right uh, uh, here is a solid line is the uh, exact diagonalizations of the uh, uh, of the of the numerical exact diagonalization of this uh, single transmon systems, and uh, the uh, uh, the circles are coming from the variational quantum deflation algorithms, right? So as I mentioned earlier, on, right, uh, we 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 try to get the ground state, and then after once we get the ground state energy, then we penalize the uh, ground state. Uh, energies and then, and, then, and then by doing so, uh, once we try to get the minimum of this uh, uh, complicated uh, fun uh, loss functions, right, then we will get the uh, first excited state energy and, and then we just keep doing that. And, uh, and then as I mentioned earlier on as well, right, uh, since we are uh, treading the external magnetic field, right, which is the uh, phi external, and then uh, and uh, is also denoted by a small uh, little f here as well, right. So as I mentioned earlier on, right, by by changing this external magnetic flux, you can tune the energy gap of this uh, between zero and one, right, as you can see here, right. So in this point, 0 0.5, you get like uh, some energy uh, separations, right? Then if you go away from the 0 0.5, you get a, a smaller energy gap, right? As you can see in this uh, figure here, right? Uh, I mean, uh, that, that's, a, that's a cool thing about this artificial uh, systems is that, I mean, you can, uh, by, by changing this external magnetic field, you can, you can tune this uh, energy gap, okay? Uh, and, and, uh, 
in this uh, figure here, right? Uh, uh, figure below, what we show is the energy, absolute energy error that we obtain from running this uh, variational algorithms, right? And then you can see here, right? Uh, most of the errors are like uh, in order of uh, 10 megahertz or so, right? So, so then uh, just for your information, right? Typically, the the transform energy gaps are in the order of uh, uh, gigahertz, right? So, so um, uh, and uh, so the errors are quite small actually. Right? It's a it's a it's a three order magnitude smaller than the energy gap of uh, of uh, of uh, of a transform system that we are trying to simulate. Okay, and of course, it's all no, it's all good. And uh, so we what we do is, hey, oops, sorry, what happens? Uh, let me see. Okay. So here is a uh, dynamical simulations that I would like to mention, right? Again, due to the time concern, let me go through briefly. Okay, so now uh, probably you you notice right um, uh, in the in the, in the maybe uh, you are already familiar with right. So H gate operation is like a, it's a nothing but it's a, it's a bifid gate operations right. So it's going from state zero to one and one to zero. So it's a very simple uh, 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 quantum computing uh, operations, right? Yeah. And uh, but in the in the down to the hardware level, uh, in terms of uh, uh, transmon systems, right? It is not really a, a trivial uh, trivial process because uh, of the following, right? So um, this, in order to, uh, uh, as as I mentioned earlier on as well, uh, transmons are uh, uh, not a, uh, not a precisely a two level system. It has a, a multi level or kind of like a four four level system or much more than uh, I say is a many three level system, right? Kind of thing. So so um, uh, you don't really have this kind of uh, a, a luxury of uh, simply say uh, it's like state zero to one and one to zero. No, it's not the case. So because if you if you drive this microwave pulse uh, between zero and one, you will also populate uh, uh, states two and three as well. So you don't want that. And, and um, there are a whole lot of uh, literatures uh, concerning how to uh, how to efficiently and ult ultimately uh, got the uh, SK operations in the down to the hardware levels and uh, here we try to uh, simulate that uh, in the digital quantum computer as well okay so what we do is that uh, we took uh, it's, it's a very simple thing we took this uh, transmog Hamiltonian that I I showed you earlier on right and then we exponentiate this uh, Hamiltonian right and then and by exponential shading in right, uh, uh, you were uh, uh, you we will get uh, so many uh, and, then, and then as you see in this uh, right for Suzuki trolley expansion right and then uh, and we were we uh, the homotonia is the the uh, single transform homotonia right and, and then we will have uh, so many uh, terms coming up and uh, and then we just have to simply uh, put it into a. a a digital quantum computer and uh, and, uh, uh, and I mean the circuit is as follow uh, and then and then what we got is the the following results right uh, uh, this is the populations of uh, state zero right uh, uh, starting from state zero right coming down and uh, then one is coming uh, going up right so eventually then at the end of the day you will get uh, 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 populations arriving to the uh, excited state, right? And then again, you see, there is still a, a very tiny minimal leakage as well, right? As I mentioned, because this is not a, a not a, a, a purely a two-level system; it has a multiple level systems, and uh, so if you consider those, you still have this um, uh, leakage, and uh, and then I may. Um, this is the best uh, uh, fidelity that we call is the 99.66% uh, average gate fidelities. Uh, again, of course, uh, 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 order expansion is uh, is, uh, is a costly and uh, and uh, the smaller the uh, time step, right? You will get a, a better fidelity and you will get a um, better result, right? So, but then with the cost of this uh, additional uh, gate operations that you have to do, and uh, this is uh, um, still very far, far away from the um, uh, say uh, current uh, uh, hardware uh, that are available in the in the in the in the experimental uh, uh, 
our communities, right? And, I mean, this is the uh, basically um, uh, there's nothing much, uh, nothing but what we're saying is that uh, if you get a, a product step size uh, smaller and smaller, you will get a, a smaller and smaller uh, error. So this is uh, obviously obviously this is uh, um, uh, this is the say I mean. Uh, uh, um, 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 uh, uh, this is a well-known result, right? And and, uh, and uh, okay, so let's go further, right? So as I as I already explained to you, like uh, uh, we did a uh, digital quantum simulation of a uh, uh, single transmode system, right? So you now what about what about uh, a couple uh, two transmode systems, right? Because we eventually what we want is like uh, we want to simulate uh, n couple uh, transmode systems, right? Which which are uh, already uh, say uh, very very hard to verify with our existing uh, best uh, supercomputer we have in the in the in the in the world right now, right? So that's the that's the final goal. But of course, uh, as a first step, right? What we have to do is that to couple these two uh, transmode systems, and in the middle there's a uh, there's a capacitor, right? And then and then and, uh, and then what we have is that we again we encode. Um, uh, this uh, a single transmode with a uh, with a uh, four qubits and uh, and then another another transmode with another four qubits, right? And, and then and then again the the enzymes are the the same circuit that we used earlier on, uh, and then we also have a uh, eight qubit enzymes uh, circuit, and then uh, and then we run the we run the digital uh, uh, we run the numerical simulation of this uh, couple uh, two transmode systems, right? And then the results are as follow. Okay. Uh, uh, and this figure here is uh, is uh, again, uh, once again, this is the exact diagonalizations of the uh, numerical exact diagonalization of these uh, systems, right? And uh, as a function of the external magnetic flux, where the uh, uh, in in these simulations we fix the one of the external magnetic flux to be uh, stationary, like say for instance like 0.5 or so, and uh, doesn't change, right? It's, it's fixed. And another uh, magnetic field is now uh, changing, right, from the, from the values uh, close to zero to a value where uh, about zero point one five or so, right. And th this is what you see here, right. And uh, and uh, and then various uh, colors refer to uh, various uh, uncoupled states uh, as labeled here, right? Uh, like, like I mean, it's, it's easy to see here, right? Zero one means uh, you have a state zeros in the in the in the in the left transmode and uh, excited state in the right transmode. One zero is uh, is uh, is a uh, uh, the left transmode is excited in the excited state, and the right transmode is in the in the ground state, right? So, and uh, as followed by zero two is that as followed, right? I mean, yeah, the left transmode in the ground state, but the right transmode is in the in the in the in the second excited state, and so on and so forth. Okay. And of course, uh, this uh, spectrum you were asked, right? Why are we? Uh, why do we care about this energy spectrums, right? Uh, and, and again, before I explain that, uh, let me tell you, uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, results that we got from the running the uh, variational uh, algorithm, the same variational algorithms that we uh, I explained earlier on, right? And then uh, we got the corresponding energy uh, spectrum as well, right? I mean, uh, they, they are all uh, quite similar, right? As you can see here as well, okay? So what I wanted to say is that, uh, sorry, I mean this is uh, uh, these uh, figures here. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not, it's not close actually. There's a, there's a avoided level crossing. Okay. So what it means is that right, typically uh, you was, you you might be familiar with from the atomic physics, right? Whenever there is an energy avoided level crossing appears, right? Uh, there is uh, there is an interaction between. Uh, uh, in between these uh, two level systems, right? Like the state zero one and one zero, for instance, in this in this uh, plot here, right? So that means uh, uh, there is a there is a inner uh, um, exchange interaction between this zero and one and one zero states, right? Uh, uh, it is very important because, uh, for instance, right? 
like on propane scale operations uh, in the in the two qubit uh, uh, gate operations, right? It's a typical uh, entangling gate operations, right? And then you you might notice, right? Okay, um, it's trivial, right? Uh, in a sense that uh, control phase gate operations nothing but uh, changing the phase factors, right? The plus sign to a minus sign, right? It's it's nothing tri uh, uh, nothing uh, say uh, 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 fancy, right? But but in the in terms of a uh, hardware down to the hardware level it is not right uh, it's, it's following right in order to uh, get this uh, control basic operations uh, what typically what one has to do is that uh, you have to prepare your couple transmod into a two zero state uh, which is the which is the yellow line uh, in the if you if you look at my uh, uh, cursor right pointer here you got to you got to prepare uh, your state here, and then uh, you got to adiabatically sweep your external magnetic field. Follow this yellow line, and uh, uh, arrive at this avoided level crossing. And my apology, my apology is that I mean you can't see the avoided level crossing because of the tiny figure here, right? But trust me, there's a there's a there's a tiny avoided level crossing depending on the, the capacitor, the interaction strength that of the capacitor that we inserted, right? So the, the higher the interaction strength, you will get a larger the energy gap, right? So there's a, there a body level crossing. And then, and, then, and then once you arrive there, and then you stay there for a certain time, and at that time where to take uh, the, sorry, at that time will dictate uh, the change of this uh, extra phase, okay? And then you sweep back, afterward you sweep back to the, uh, to the original uh, zero, F equal to zero uh, locations, okay? So that's how you done in typically in the uh, experiments, okay? So, so in our uh, proposal, we did the same uh, 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 detailed uh, numerical simulations uh, of this uh, hardware level kind of uh, simulation of this control basic operations and, uh, and non-trivial uh, operations. And, uh, and that's what we found here as well. I mean, this is a unitary gate evolutions of uh, two zero state and one one state, right? Uh, and then you see that, uh, why are they oscillating, right? Because of the presence of this avoid level crossing, they will exchange the excitations between the two zero and one one. And, uh, and then uh, once uh, we uh, manage to arrive to this uh, population inversions of, uh, or to the state one one, right? Starting from state one one and then coming back to one one state. Then afterwards, uh, at this point, TG2, you were realized a control phase gate. Okay, so uh, and then and then we did exactly this uh, numerical simulations. Uh, I mean, this is uh, all uh, say uh, uh, say we are we are emulating this uh, unitary evolution in the quantum simulator kind of thing, and uh, uh, and then uh, we got we we also got like a ninety nine point five percent gate fidelities of uh, achieving achieving this uh, uh, control phase gate operations, right, which is crucial for. Uh, uh, realizing uh, uh, entangling gate uh, in the experiments. Okay, so again, it's the same thing. Uh, we we also plot this uh, uh, the stress types uh, versus the the error that uh, we we got from the from this uh, numerical simulations, uh, and uh, and then we plot uh, we we plot it in a lot of plot here as well. And uh, what I wanted to say, uh, lastly, right? I think I think my time is running out. Um, is the following right so uh another, so what what about right you you may ask right what about like is all is always good right uh simulating two transmon right and uh, we uh, project that uh, uh in order to simulate uh see n transmon uh, 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 processing unit right uh, with the method that uh, we outlined here right and so so we uh, is is kind of a uh, quite uh, quite interesting things. Uh, the the resources does not explode with like exponential, but it's a is is a kind of a polynomial in the number of uh, transmond that uh, we are trying to simulate. So this kind of a excuse me, I'm sorry. It's kind of a, it's kind of a good news, right? In the sense that uh, it doesn't it doesn't uh, grow uh, exponentially. But it's in a, a polynomial with uh, a number of uh, uh, m transmodes that we like to simulate. I kind of kind of need. But again, uh, 
uh, in order to simulate the Suzuki uh, simulations, right? Still, uh, uh, is a lot of uh, we we require uh, quite a number of large number of terms, so we don't expect uh, uh, to uh, to simulate uh, those uh, uh, Trora expansion simulations in the near term quantum uh, hardware. Uh, so uh, that is not a very good news, but but again, uh, for the stationary state uh, numerical simulation, this is uh, kind of a, uh, interesting that uh, maybe for the for the energy spectrum simulations, it is is still uh, feasible with uh, uh, near term hardware. Okay, so that is what I'm uh, getting at, uh, and uh, this is the, uh, the the construction of the the answer circuit that uh, uh, we propose to. Uh, uh, simulate uh, n transmode uh, processors uh, with, uh, with a different uh, processor. Okay, and so in summary, uh, I have uh, also shown you. Uh, I mean, the main message here is that right, uh, we are in the in the in the in the exciting time where when uh, all those um, um, interesting uh, quantum computing and quantum simulation experiments are, are carry, being carried out and uh, and then uh, we are in the in the time where uh, the the best supercomputers can now uh, cannot be uh, able to simulate those uh, uh, experiments uh, in the uh, and so 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 that it is uh, uh, again it is in the in the spirit of uh, Richard Feynman's uh, uh, proposal, right? Quantum simulation, right? Uh, unless why not? Why not we use? Uh, we take a, a quantum processor to simulate uh, uh, a different uh, quantum processors, and uh, that's what we exactly propose in the, in this uh, in this project, right? And then I also uh, mentioned in the is a is a is a is a in a in the typical. I mean, it's just for uh, say. Um, if then I uh, say conversational state, right? We we use a uh, transmod Hamiltonian as an example, but our method can be applied to a general, uh, can be a general uh, uh, quantum uh, processor, right? It can be a ion trap, or it can be a it can be a, a NV centers or whatever, right? I mean, any any types of quantum processors that you you like to simulate, it can be it can be uh, it can be done and. Uh, and then, uh, and then I also show you some of the uh, numerical and simulation results, uh, finding out the uh, excited state uh, energy spectrons, and then also followed by the uh, Suzuki Trotter, uh, Trotter Suzuki expansion and simulations, right? And then also also show you like uh, how a typical uh, a supercondensed circuit experiments done for a, a single qubit uh, and then also a two qubit gate uh, uh, experimentally, right? So, like uh, I use uh, I use example of uh, Biffley gate and the control phase gate operations, right? So, and then you will see that this is not a, uh, not a trivial uh, experiments, and uh, and, uh, and then uh, we we try to also uh, numerically simulate those uh, uh, complex uh, uh, quantum dynamical evolutions in the, in the quantum simulators, right? And I also show some of the uh, numerical results as well, right? Uh, with that, um, let me uh, let me end by saying uh, uh, thanks to uh, my supervisor, current supervisor, my colleagues, Things and uh, Hannah, and uh, Nichols and uh, Jones from the Intels and uh, and William Oliver's. And uh, this is the uh, beautiful pictures that we took like uh, a year ago before all these uh, COVID nineteen situations uh, uh, started. So with that, uh, I mean, I thank you all for your attentions and. Uh, say, uh, please feel free to ask uh, questions if you have any or, or comments. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, you can uh, either unmute yourself and just ask, or you can raise your virtual hand if you'd like. So on any questions. If you are if you are interested in the protest in Myanmar also, I, <laughs> you can you can also ask me questions about that too. Anyway, yeah. Please, mm. I mean uh, I don't have to be uh, shy. I mean you can ask me any questions you want.
مرحبا بس انسى Can we be sure that hashtag again for my young more? All right. Yes, what's happening now in my young more? Uh, I said, uh, so uh, on what I know, I mean, uh, the police uh, fires uh, um, shots and the real bullet, bullets to the to the crowd. And I think that somebody uh, died. Uh, 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 from the from the uh, from the crowd, so it's it's very sad. Yeah. Yeah, I'm also going to. I just put in the chat the link on Twitter to that hashtag. So if anybody wants to see that. Okay. So if um, aren't any questions? I don't think I have any questions now, but um, there's a, there's a chat. Oh no, they were saying that they okay. had to go now. Um, maybe could you go to the last slide when we were okay. talking about future work? Because you mentioned. So I mean, <laughs> so this might be a very naive question, yeah, but please. Is it that I like this for you very, very naive? But how would your proposal for trying to? So, I mean, basically, what you're trying to say is that the future of quantum processes need to be simulated on quantum computers. So, right. how would you say the transmon, the this construction of the quantum computer with the transmon would compare to, say, current efforts to try and build, say, a topological quantum computer? Right. So how when they compare basically? So would you say your or do you see what like I said? This might be a very naive question, but right, right. I think I think there are um, two aspects about this, right? I think you are asking is like uh, uh, the effect of uh, uh, trying to simulate, uh, trying to design a transmon circuit, and uh, and then on the one hand you have a uh, uh, topological qubits that are being uh, investigated by Microsoft and. Uh, the, yeah, the others, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I would say that um, um, so they they are they are kind of uh, uh two different approaches, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, in my opinion, right, um, the uh, transmons are uh good uh for now, but but um, if you try to um say naively, just simply uh fabricate. Uh, a good transmons and uh, and I put it into um, uh, a large number of transmons circuit, right? Then uh, you will start to see that uh, there will be an unwanted uh, a cross dot and uh, some of the uh, noises uh, presence in the circuit, and uh, it's going to be extremely noisy. So mm -hmm. again, this is uh, nothing to do with our proposal in the sense that I mean. What we try to uh, push forward is like, you know, whenever you need, like a kind of like a, a verification or kind of experiments, right? Like, um, because, because I mean, uh, uh, definitely, right? If we have uh, more and more uh, number of qubits uh, inside, present inside your uh, uh, quantum systems, right? Then your Hebel space is going to be larger and larger, right? Eventually, because it's going to grow exponentially, right? So mm -hmm. then uh, one, of course, I mean there are also numerous uh, uh, numerical numerical simulation techniques like uh, you know uh, quantum Monte Carlo or, or, or Feynman trajectory approach or whatever it is, right? Those, but again, um, uh, what you have to be careful is that we are proposing like uh, you know uh, scenarios where all these existing classical techniques break down, right? Because uh, due to the number of uh, factors, right? One is a uh, Typically, it's a, it's a memory issues, right? The running of a memory. But another one is that even though even though you you can capture those uh, 
system properly, right, without uh, uh, any issues, right, like, a, like trying to use as a, some sort of a tensor network approach, or whatever it is, right, but, but then uh, tensor network approach might not also be efficient if, if you talk about like a, the bound dimensions are large and whatever it is, right? So, so then those methods is going, are not going to be efficient anymore, right? So in those scenarios, then we are hoping that our method is going to help uh, in uh, solving these uh, problems, right? Then, then, uh, then all the existing classical literatures, uh, classical algorithms will not be not efficient anymore, right? And so, so then uh, the only a way to move forward is to use a quantum computer to simulate those uh, uh, quantum systems, right? And again, uh, coming back to this topological and uh, and also the transmog comparison is that my point here is that, right, uh, uh, I mean, again, it has nothing to do with this proposal here, right? Because uh, you can, you can, in principle, uh, ideally uh, uh, put in thousand of transmon in a, in a single chip and uh, but uh, you can you can still do some sort of numerical simulations and blah 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 right with our methods proposed here but in the experiments right you will start to see so many noises and that and so uh it's not very good so uh my my opinion is that in order to uh, go forward in this direction is some sort of uh, a hybrid systems where uh, we should borrow some of the uh, very nice and interesting features of those topological uh, qubit communities, right? Because they have this kind of a uh, bit in error protection, right? Uh, in the in the in the in the down to the hardware level. So again, uh, there are a number of uh, recent articles like in the in the superconducting circuit architectures where they try to design a, a new types of uh, a qubit, right? Which is not a transmog. But uh, with those qubits, uh, if you also look at the look at the the look at look at the wave functions and uh, down to the hardware level, they also have a uh, built-in error robustness inside. So, so that uh, what I'm saying is that in that way, you will be able to scale up uh, the number of uh, qubit. But again, the the proposal that I'm presenting here uh, does not concern like whether or not you use a, a transmon or any types of a qubit. It can be applied to any of the critical systems. Yeah, and then I think we we have yet to see the development of a topological qubit, right? I think um, we have not seen any um, uh, say um, any experiments where uh, we can uh, say perform. A, a gate operations on the on the topological any on the devices right so it would be also cool to have to see those uh, development as well i think uh, but again simply that the uh, experiment their experiments are is extremely challenging to to be realized experimentally yeah mm -hmm. i hope i answer your questions no i then then answered it very well thank you any other questions Okay, so maybe let's thank Dr. Chao again. Thank you.